All right, welcome everybody. It is 4.32 p.m. and today is St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, 2022. Uh, and I say 4.32 p.m., I'm talking about here in California and the West Coast. Of course, you guys on the East Coast are three hours ahead of us, so you can do the math, figure that out yourself. Anyway, we've got kind of a wild show tonight. We're gonna start off and talk, we're gonna do two news you can use this. And so I'll, I'll break between the two. As you can let Kevin know so he can clip those and put them up on YouTube and TikTok and all that. Um, first, we're gonna complete our discussion of stagflation. Um, last two, or Tuesday, we <laughs> talked about that we're gonna be doing, or we, we talked about the inflationary portion. Now we're going to talk about the stagnant growth portion and what's causing that and how that all plays out. So let's go ahead and fire up with stagflation part two. All right, I'll give you a little background, set the stage here. In 2021, hopes were um, that inflation was a result of some short-term factors related to the restart of the economy due to COVID. So when COVID happened, um, for those of you that weren't aware, a lot of people, of course, were not laid off, but had to work from home or in, in a lot of cases in factories and things like that, they actually, you know, couldn't go in to work. Um, and basically everything except the farm economy was shut down. The farm economy had to keep going, production of food. Um, and there were some big issues there with uh, people in meatpacking plants, everybody getting sick and that type of thing. But essentially, you know, the farmers, of which I'm one, uh, kept going and continued that supply chain. But everybody else kind of shut down or tapered off some of their growth. So when everything restarted in 2021, you know, there was a short-term spike in inflationary pressures because there were very few supplies of goods and, and some services, and there was a built-up, pent-up demand for those things. And so the hope was um, it was a short-term issue. Um, also, there were some industry-specific shortages that occurred as a result of uh, frankly, some stupid decisions on some of the industry leaders' parts. For example, uh, the auto industry shifted their entire uh, use of semiconductors from American-made to Chinese-made and Taiwanese-made. And what happened is, uh, as we've talked for the last year and a half or so, we couldn't get those things in. I mean, they weren't making them in China. And then when they were shipping them, we couldn't offload them here quick enough and whole industries like the production of automobiles in this country shut down and that rippled down into other parts suppliers, so on and so forth. So that was a big problem. Um, and once again, it was not necessarily caused by COVID as much as we had the ability to make those things here. Previously we had, but in order to save a penny, uh, Detroit decided let's go ahead and buy these things from China. Now, there were some smart companies. Tesla was one. Tesla, when there was a shortage of semiconductors and chips for their cars, went out and said, screw that. We're going to build our own chip factory. We're going to make our own stuff. Um, and, you know, they were able to be successful and still provide Tesla autos during uh, the shutdown. Uh, but anyway, that shut down the auto industry and a lot of the components. So when everything got restarted, uh, and it's taken much longer for this thing to restart than everybody's expecting. We had, and we still have today, a shortage of goods and services. Now, you guys have all seen this. Uh, if you've gone out to eat um, or you've gone to a, a store like a Starbucks type thing where they're having rotating, they're still having rotating outages. Um, and it's because they have not been able to get enough employees to restock these things. That has also manifested into some manufacturing facilities around the country, but not at that high of a level. We talked last November about that, that month, or actually early December, about the month of November being the worst month ever for people quitting their jobs. It was the highest amount of folks that had ever quit their jobs. And uh, millions of people, for some reason, in November last year, walked away from their employment. Now, what you don't hear in the news today is that last month was one of the largest hiring months ever. And a lot of these manufacturing positions around the country and some of the, the deeper level uh, economic activities that we don't see, in other words, except for the Starbucks and the restaurants and things like that, these people are now staffed, these companies are now staffed back up to full supply. 
So there isn't really a, a shortage of goods. Now there is still a problem with regards to services and there's a lag in production. Once again, because a lot of people who are in that frontline service industries of things like Starbucks, I'm not picking on Starbucks, it's every, something everybody understands, Starbucks and, and some of the restaurants and things like that, they have not been able to restaff because frankly, a lot of folks wanted to uh, you know, quit that type of employment because they were front lines, they tended to get COVID at a higher rate and you know, people just rethought their lives, decided not to do that. So that has been some of the real factors behind why we've gotten a stagnant economy, a, a longer drawn out period to achieve full production. I believe that probably by next month we'll be at full production for everything except the frontline service industries. Um, and then we have this frontline service is industry issue, the server type issues that we talked about. However, the biggest problem in the supply chain right now is we have a manipulated market. Um, and in a lot of aspects, these guys have taken a page out of the uh, crypto world where we, they've gone around and they, they are manipulating their own market without benefit of government assistance. So let's say, for example, the oil industry. We're not short oil nationwide. We're not short oil worldwide. Yes, Russia, which was the fifth largest producer, is basically unable to ship anything out, but we had an oversupply of oil and we still do worldwide. But they're using that as an excuse to future price the price of oil. That's why it's gone up tremendous. In California here this last week, I saw things that range from 649 to 699 a gallon. It's crazy. Um, and I know in some of these other states, it's significantly less. Of course, in California, we take everybody's money uh, when we're short and they take it vis-a-vis -vis, uh, things like gasoline tax and some other stupid things we're going to talk about coming up here in a minute. But anyway, I believe there is a, uh, a large scale effort in a large, in a large amount of industries, specifically things like the oil industry, where it is being manipulated. They're using the fact that we are in an inflationary environment because of a mismanagement of some of the supply chains, but also, um, you know, just where there's true shortages. And they're using that to, you know, basically align their pockets. You're gonna see probably starting in July, huge windfall profits for the oil companies and things like that. You know, it's like, gee, we don't know what happened. You know, we made a lot of money. Well, here's what happened. You jacked the price up. Uh, you guys colluded, I believe they got together and I'm, I'm not making, that's my opinion. I'm not making that a public charge, but I'm, I, I'm under the belief that at, as after studying all this stuff, there's a large amount of manipulation going on in a lot of industries to cause that. So, um, we'll see what happens. Um, we, we talked about the, uh, the downside of stagflation. The last time we had this in the economy was about 50 years ago during the Nixon administration. And the, uh, the Fed at that time was unable to raise prices fast enough or raise interest rates fast enough to diminish the price increases. And when you raise interest, prices tend to be capped or go down. And that, um, that was unable to be successful then. President Nixon at the time stepped in and issued an executive order freezing all wages and price increases. And that did the trick. That stopped stagflation. Um, my guess is that uh, President Biden, that would be his thing that he could do to get this thing under control. It is not what we want to do as a country. However, it is the only thing in my belief that's going to work. Um, and we're going to talk about that in, in this next segment um, because interest rates can't be raised high enough and fast enough, in my opinion, to stop the stagflation runaway train. So that is the conclusion of our little mini series on stagflation, the inflationary part and the stagnant growth part. And, uh, you know, we'll be glad to talk about it uh, in more detail here in a month or so when some of the tea leaves are a little easier to read. So that's it for that piece. All right.